Hey, thanks for checking out my channel. I'm John Stark from MacTheMovieGuy.com, and this is my review of The School for Good and Evil. <laughs> uh, even though it's spooky season, there's not really much spooky about this film, so I can't count this as my spooky review for the day. But didn't I see this movie already? <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm a blind film critic, and uh, I watched this with audio description on Netflix, where it's 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 an original, and I have a feeling Netflix thinks they have the new Harry Potter, so uh, beware <laughs> if you if your children read these books, um, you'll be watching what I'm sure is a franchise of this series. Oh God. Um, so, what is the school of good and evil, and why is it the next, the the new hotness, as the kids are saying? That's that's what they say now on fleek. That's what they used to say, but now they they say new things, and I don't know what they say. Um, but it is a story. <laughs> It's basically Descendants, okay? I'll just say it. It's basically Disney's Descendants. It's school. It's schools where there are, like, there's a school where people are, like, heroes, like, children of heroes, and there are, there's a school where people are children of villains. And uh, they here they actually sort of unite as, like, one school. Like, they have, like, two different wings, and they occasionally meet for... <sighs> friendly get-togethers so that they can develop these arch rivalries. <laughs> but you have people in here who are like Captain Hook's son, uh, Lancelot's son. So it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty obvious what what it is and what it's trying to do. And it talks about how these are the people who we choose to be to be cast into the stories that are told over time that 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 teach about the values of of the balance of good and evil and it's like oh my this we are running running deep out of things to make stories about and netflix has gone all in all in on this one They've brought in director Paul Feig, who uh, you might remember because he's directed several things uh, that have uh, gone theatrical in the past. Uh, I'll just name the Ghostbusters female remake as being one of them. But he has many credits to his name. Uh, he works a lot with Judd Apatow and is also responsible way back in the day for the creation of Freaks and Geeks. And I wish this show was way more like that. That would be great. It's not. It, uh, it also features, they, they spend a lot of money on cast members. This has uh, Charlize Theron, Kerry Washington, Lawrence Fishburne, Michelle Yeoh. It's got a cast backing this film. So uh, it's, it, this is not a small film. This is not some just random film on Netflix for you to just like, be like uh, I'm not gonna watch that. <laughs> Netflix probably spent five million dollars and it's just like churning that out. I'm like, I don't know what Netflix spent on this movie, but it's definitely not five million dollars. This is definitely one of those big ones that uh, they they would really like you to see, like The Gray Man, where they probably dropped two hundred million dollars on this, and the future of Netflix rests on whether or not this film is successful. So it's, it's okay. It's fine. I didn't like the way that it began because it felt to me like, <sighs> I I could see where what it wanted to do, but I was thinking to myself the whole time, I was like, if you could just look back, I know you're trying to capture lightning in a bottle and everybody's been trying to capture that lightning ever since Harry Potter became a big thing. We've seen so many uh, young adult adaptations that have or have not worked. And many of them have not worked. Many of them have, have led to only one film, even though it's a series of books. My God, they wouldn't even finish the Divergent series. 
they literally made the asinine decision to split the final book into two movies and Lionsgate wouldn't even make the last half of the fucking book. That is where we're at. <laughs> I literally, that is one of the things that I think about. If I ever get on a talk show and they're like, what are the most perplexing things about Hollywood? I'll be like, that. That is the most, <laughs> the existence of that film, Allegiant, perplexes the shit out of me. If you're so confident that, the, that you can split the final book into two movies, then you must make two movies. You can't just suddenly be like, no, nope, never mind. <laughs> it's like, no, then this movie should have just been one movie. <laughs> it's one book. <sighs> So this is, I don't know how many books are in this series. I didn't look it up. Oh, God, God, God willing, it's not that much. Hopefully it's like Hunger Games and there's only like three books. Um, but it didn't look at how these other franchises became hits. It doesn't play like any of them. It plays really kind of like a shitty Disney Channel movie at the beginning. Which is why I was like, is this Descendants? Uh, I know... I I looked at the credits and I was like, why do I know the names Sophia and Caruso? And I looked at her credits and I was like, the only thing I've seen her in is Evil. And I think the only reason I know her name is because Evil has audio description and audio description reads the opening credits <laughs> every week. So I think I've actually learned her name just by watching like three seasons of Evil and having her name read off. I was expecting, I was like, oh, Sophia and Caruso's in this, cool. I was like, wait a minute, I don't know who this is. I can't even tell you which daughter it is <laughs> of, of hers on Evil. <laughs> so uh, this, the adults are the, are the big draw here. I don't think kids know who these, these people are. Unless Sophia and Caruso is also, I don't know, like a YouTube star or something. Who knows these days, but it just, it starts kind of goofy, uh, and a little bit over the top with these two girls in this village, and there's a ton of narration. They literally hired Kate Blanchett to come in to narrate this film. So, it's well narrated, I will say. Um, not audio described, it's just narration in general to be able to explain a lot of, a lot of plot details to you because there's a lot to explain. This movie is, with credits, two and a half hours. Now, I will say that when I backed out, because I didn't watch the credits, uh, I watched long enough, and thank God it, it gave them citation up at the top. The audio, na audio description narrators had told me immediately who they were. I backed out. There was 11 minutes of credits left. So this film's really about two hours and 20 minutes long. It's not, it's not quite as long as it would seem, but it's still, that's, that's the indicator of how serious is Netflix taking this film? Because you don't release a film aimed at this age group that is that long, unless you think you're Harry Potter. That's it. That's, you just don't. Uh, get, you can't get kids to sit still for that long and stay interested. So the only reason you would do that is if you're trying to create the next Harry Potter or Hunger Games. So this is clearly, uh, it clearly thinks highly of itself as a film. And Netflix really wants to make this happen. So get ready because I'm sure there will be a sequel. Anyway, uh, it's just, it's, it ends up being fine. Once you get into it, once they get to this school, there's enough interesting things happening. They play a little bit with the conventions of what is good and what is evil. Uh, there's this, uh, basically, these two best friends. One of them identifies, basically, with being a witch. And even before she's ever dropped at the school, so when they get to the school, she gets dropped at the school of good, and the other, who's this girl who wants to be a princess gets dropped at the school of evil and they don't understand why like they, they're like wait a minute what we're at the wrong schools and so they spend like all this time trying to get back to the <laughs> trying to swap schools uh and but it's that it's the fact that they're atypical of the schools that they're in that makes the movie interesting 
because they don't do things the way everybody else around them does them. So they end up affecting things in, in very interesting ways. Uh, the You end up seeing that, uh, much to her protesting, uh, she, the the girl that is that is dropped at the the good school is not quite as Agatha is not quite as uh, evil as she may seem. She's quite good, and she's a really good protagonist. So after the first like fifteen minutes of the film, where they're like wandering around the town, and we learn about their home lives and random people in town making fun of them and we learn their backstory about how they bonded and all this stuff once we get past that the movie and the film drops them at the schools the movie kicks in and feels more like an actual cinematic adventure <laughs> i don't know what the beginning feels like it just it really just feels like like disney's descendants it just feels like something that was never meant to be theatrical it feels like this thing that just we kind of jump into right away and it's a lot of exposition and it's shot in a way that felt like I was watching a Disney Channel movie and then when we get to the school and they actually have a budget it kind of clicks in and then Charlize Theron and and Kerry Washington walk on the screen and suddenly it's like oh we're invested in this part of the movie but god forbid they go home because I don't know what the hell home is like Whereas with the other films, with Katniss and Harry Potter, their their home lives were compelling as well, you know, in their own special ways. This way is not that. So they're fun when they're at school. They're not fun when they're not at school. Uh, so yeah, I think your kids are probably going to want to see this. <laughs> I, if I'm assuming there's a book series, I'm assuming Netflix didn't just will this into existence, although we've played around with storybook characters so many times before and everything else that I would not be too surprised. Like, whoever wrote this, I hope they didn't pat themselves on the back and be like, man, I created something wholly original. It's like, not really. You really didn't. Like, let's be honest here. <laughs> you really didn't. Um, this is, this is Disney's Descendants, uh, by the way. This is just, that's what that is. Uh, you, 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 you manipulated it a little bit and, uh, changed it up so that it, it could look, a, like, original. It wasn't so obvious. You know, you couldn't have the same characters in it, obviously, because they, they were related to certain Disney characters, so you had to change it up. But, uh, it's, it is what it is. Uh, I, 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 I see it for you, um... I don't know. I don't know what I would have done if I had seen this in theaters. I, I don't know if it has that cinematic feel to it or not. But uh, it's it's Netflix swinging for the fences. And Netflix swinging for the fences doesn't always work. Uh, it, I, it didn't work for me with The Gray Man. It didn't work for me with Red Notice. Uh, each film was okay. And this is okay. It's not The Hunger Games. It's not Harry Potter. It's not even Divergent. It's just something that will probably get a sequel whether it needs it or not. So, uh, parents beware. Watch this with your kids. No, it's, it's okay. It's fine. Uh, it's, it's nothing too special even though it proclaims to be there's a story and a mystery here but uh honestly the film is so bloated in runtime that there's a lot here there's just a lot in this film i could talk about this film for 30 minutes i just don't want to do that so i'm gonna go ahead and cap it off the audio description was fine it uh it describes there's a lot of visual effect work here that it has to describe from things. There's like a, there's like a forest around the school. <laughs> it's even ripping off Harry Potter. <laughs> so, uh, and the forest has some, some interesting things in it. Anyway, the film is, it's very special. Actually, in many ways, I think everybody should see it just because you, we could be like, oh, this is what we're doing now. We're just ripping off everything and just throwing it in one film. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, 
So, uh, but I'm going to give the school for good and evil, I'm going to give it a C plus. <laughs> um, the, yeah, I don't even, I don't, I don't know. I feel like I feel bad for all of the actors that signed up for this because I didn't think any of them were given good roles or good writing or enough screen time. I think Michelle Yeoh is wasted in this film. I mean, we can wait till you see it. She has like one good line where she, uh, rev she's talking about like the class that she's in and uh, how stupid it is and how she used to teach a different class. And she's like, do you think I care about smiles? <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I think the cast here is just, I mean, Lawrence Fishburne felt like he was sleepwalking through this film because it's so uninteresting to him. He's like, I was in Do the Right Thing. What the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, they, this, this film is, you'll see, you'll check it out. I feel like it. I feel like you're going to watch it. Anyway, if you stuck to this, inter this uh, interview, if you stuck to this review long enough, I'm laughing because I just reviewed this film. Anyway, uh, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 100 by the end of the year. I think that'd be great if, if I could be in a triple digit YouTuber. <laughs> it's a, such a small request. <laughs> and, um, I also have a website, MacTheMovieGuy.com. I have a YouTube at MacTheMovieGuy.com. There's a recurring theme there. Um, you can also go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org, and it'll let you know what has audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the adna.org. That's the, the adna.org. And you can look up the your favorite TV shows and movies and see who narrates them or who did the audio mixing or whatever. Anyway, I gotta go review something else, but I will see you on the other side.